okay? So if, when we talk about the donation of protons, we're really talking about hydrogen ions, right? So when we have a proton, we're talking about a just H plus ion is moving from one to the other. And then a base is considered a proton acceptor. Typically, a base contains an OH, okay? Uh, bases can contain other things than, than just OHs, but typically a base contains an OH, okay? We have considered both um, strong acids and weak acids, strong acids and strong bases. And what it means to be considered a strong acid or a strong base means that if you are a strong acid or a strong base, when you're put into water, you dissociate all the way. So every single, um, like HCl, for example, is a strong acid. If I put HCl into water, every single HCl molecule will, will ionize. It will become H plus and it will become Cl minus for every single one of them. Um, weak acids don't do that. Not all of the atoms will dissociate, okay? Not all of them will dissolve. So they um, are not, they're not as easy to intermix with acids and bases. So there's a list I have here of strong acids and strong bases. Um, not necessarily a list you'll need to memorize. They're, they're pretty common ones here. Um, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, and then nitric chloric, perchloric, and sulfuric acid are all considered strong acids. So what that means is that when we do experiments with acids and bases, we want to use strong acids and strong bases so that there's no like ambiguity about what the concentration is, right? If we know it's going to dissolve or dissociate all the way, that makes our calculations much simpler if we know um, that it's going to go all the way to completion, things like that, okay? So we've got anything that's not in this list would be considered a weak acid or a weak base, okay? But in our experiments, we're going to do um, the best we can to work only with strong acids and strong bases, okay? <clears throat> so here is um, kind of a couple definitions we need to think about when we talk about titrations, um, I said titration is a lab technique, and it is. It's a um, delivery of a measured volume of solution of a known concentration into a solution containing the substance that's being analyzed. So that's a, that's a lot of words, basically, to say. We're going to take the concentration of something we know and use it to determine the concentration of something unknown. We're going to try to neutralize that system. Okay, so let's jump down here what it means to neutralize or standardize. That means the same thing. Neutralize means we're going to convert all of the um, H plus or OH ions into water. So we want to neutralize by reaching a pH of 7. Right? We're going to try to get all of the acid um, to become water and all of the base to become water. Okay? Because in any acid-base reaction, water is the product, right? When I neutralize those things, water becomes the product, um, which is a neutral pH of 7. Okay, so in a titration, the goal is to neutralize, to get it to be a pH of 7, okay? Or to have all of those hydrogens and hydroxides to turn into water, okay? Because if I put together the proton from one and the OH from the other, that literally makes H2O. Right, that's what's happening there. And then we'll have a spectator ion like sodium chloride or sodium nitrate or whatever the um, anion and cation from the other parts of that were. Okay, um, <clears throat> these two definitions right here equivalence point and end point. Um, equivalence point is if we've reached enough of our liquid um, to react exactly to turn it neutral. So and that's going to make a little bit more sense when we actually do the lab. I might show a quick video here if we have time. Um, and then the end point is where the indicator changes color so you can tell the equivalence point has been reached. So let me give you like a quick rundown of what might happen. Okay, I'm going to draw like a setup of what the lab will look like. Okay, so we will have some Erlenmeyer flask, okay, that sits here that contains an acid. Okay, and we won't probably know the concentration of that acid. And then we've got this big, long piece of glassware called a burette. Okay, and it will contain 
a base, okay? And we know our concentration of the base, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna empty some of this base into my acid solution until it neutralizes, until it becomes water, until we reach that end point, okay? Or equivalence point, whatever, until it has been neutralized. Once we do that, um, we will find out how many moles of base we used. We'll convert that to figure out how many moles of acid that is, and then we'll be able to solve for our concentration of acid. So we're gonna work through um, this, this molarity equals moles over liters, right? We're gonna be able to work through that equation to help us figure out what our neutralization is. So here's a question maybe you're asking, well, how do I know that it's neutralized? Did any of you figure, or think about that? How will, I, how will I know if it's neutralized? We used what's called an indicator. Okay, the indicator changes color. So we will drop, put a few drops of indicator into the acid. Okay, and the indicator we use is called phenothalein. We put like a couple drops of that indicator into our acid and it's clear. It starts out clear. The indicator is clear anytime the pH of the solution is acidic. And then as soon as the, the pH of the solution turns basic, it turns pink. So the indicator literally changes color once my acid now becomes a base. And so what we want to look for, if we're looking for the neutralization point of that, we want our titration or our indicator color to be so light pink that it barely looks pink because we don't want it to be really basic. We want it to be neutral at seven, right? And so we're going to look for something that's really pink. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a... Um, so when we look at titrations, we have to pay attention to the ratio of hydrogens to hydroxides. In this example with HCl and NaOH, what's the ratio between hydrogen ions and hydroxides? What's the ratio between hydrogen ions and hydroxides? Right, just one to one. It, it, it would be different. It wouldn't be one-to-one -one if we were titrating HCl and CaOH2, right? That would be different because for every molecule that breaks apart, I would have two hydroxides and only one hydrogen ion, right? That's where the ratio would change. Does that, does that make sense now that you see a different example? Another one would be if I was doing H2SO4 and NaOH, right? I would have twice as many hydrogen ions as hydroxides, okay? So if our ratios are one-to-one -one, or if they're the same as they are in this case, that would mean that the number of moles of HCl would need to be equal to the number of moles of NaOH, right? If our goal is to neutralize or to use up all of them, I want my moles of each one to be equal to the other one, okay? So I'm going to start with the information I know, I've got a 0 0.350 molar solution of NaOH, and I've got 25 mils of that, so 0 0.025 liters. I'm gonna figure out how many moles of base do I have present, okay? How many moles of base are present to begin with? Okay, 0 0.025 times 0 0.35 gives me 0 0.087, oh no, one more zero, 0 0.00875 moles of NaOH. So of my base, I have that many moles, which would mean I would need exactly that many number of moles of HCl. So I need 0 0.00875 moles of HCl. Okay, and so my, out, my overall question is to find volume of HCl. I know how many moles I need. I know my concentration. And so now I can just go use molarity again to solve for volume. So 0 0.100 molar equals 0 0.00875 moles of HCl over liters. And that means I'm going to need 0 0.0875 liters or 87.5 milliliters. Okay. 
So here's what I want us to, to look at. Does that kind of make sense, the math with that? It's really, really about the ratio between hydrogens and hydroxides. Okay, so I want you to look at our answers here and, and ask yourself, is that reasonable? Okay, I want to neutralize 25 milliliters of this solution. So start by answering this question. Which one is more concentrated, my acid or my base? Which of them has a higher concentration, the acid or the base? This is acid, this is base, right? Base is containing hydroxide. So my base is significantly more concentrated than my acid, 0.35 versus 0.1. There is much, there, there's a lot more hydroxide ions in that 25 milliliters. So it would make sense to me that I need a higher volume of acid with a lower concentration to neutralize my base. Right, do we see how that relationship works out? I'm gonna need more acid to be able to neutralize that because it's, I have a weaker concentration, right? I have a smaller concentration. There are fewer hydrogen ions per milliliter than there are of my base. And so I've gotta get enough hydrogen ions in there to neutralize all of them, which means I will need to use more liquid. Let's try this one. An attempt is made to standardize. Remember, standardize and neutralize mean the same thing. So an attempt is made to standardize 1.3009 grams of this big formula with NaOH. Okay? This big formula right here is an acid. Okay? And here is our hydrogen ion. It's near the front. It's not exactly at the front, but it's near the front. So it's gonna only have one hydrogen to one hydroxide. That's important. That's gonna make sure that our ratio remains the same. This part is just part of this hydrocarbon right here. So we would have all of this formula, C8H4O4, and then we would have a hydrogen attached out to the side and a, a potassium attached to the side. This hydrogen, would disconnect and become the donor. These are so attached to the hydrogens or to the carbons that they don't get donated, they stay. It would be the one that's left out by itself. And that's why it's written like this instead of CH89, right? Instead of sticking that H in the middle, by putting it out front, it tells us that's gonna be an acid. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, so there's our hydrogen and there's our OH. Um, all right. Let's start looking at what we have here. Um, we have a volume of base. We have a mass of acid. And that's about all we have. Okay? So let's start looking at, if I have 1.3009 grams of this big formula, does grams do us any good? No. So I'm going to go ahead and convert that to moles because I just know that grams isn't going to do us any good. I at least need to put it into moles. So we need molar mass of that big guy. Okay, my molar mass came out at about 204. I don't know if that's similar to what you had. And so that leaves me with 0 0.0064 moles of our, we're, I'm just gonna put acid here because I'm not gonna write out the whole thing, okay? We know that's of our acid. And it says, I used 41.2 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to neutralize all my ions. And so what is the concentration of my sodium hydroxide? How can I get to answer that question if I'm not given anything else about my acid or about my base? That's right. It's one to one. So if I use this many moles of my acid, that means I also have this many moles of my base, NaOH. 
And so then I can take that divided by my liters, 0 0.0412 liters, and I am able to find my concentration. And so my concentration came out about 0.155 molar. Okay, the biggest sticking point here is making sure we can see the ratio of moles of acid to moles of base. Right, we want to make sure that we have that um, and we feel comfortable with that. Okay. All right, we're going to try this last one here that does not have a one-to-one -one ratio. So I want to make sure we can, we can pick this out correctly, okay? Um, what volume of a 0.5 molar strontium hydroxide will react completely with 25 mils of 0.2 molar HCl? Okay, so I've got information about my acid. And so I'm going to go ahead and go with that first. 0.2 molar equals moles of HCl over 0 0.025 liters. Gives me 0 0.005 moles of HCl. Okay, so let's look at our ratio here. If this is strontium hydroxide, do I need twice as much acid or twice as much base? I need twice as much acid. So if I, I, I've got to work it backwards now. If I know how much acid I use and I need this to be twice as much as my base, how many moles of base do I actually need? Half of that. So 0 0.0025 moles of SROH2, right? You see how we had to work that one backwards? Okay, if I, if I know I use this much acid, this many moles of acid, and I know I need that to be twice as much as my moles of base, I'm going to go with that. And then I can find volume, so 0.5 molar base equals moles over point, oh, sorry, sorry, 0 0.0025 moles over liters. And so that gives me 0 0.005 liters or 5 milliliters. So I don't need very much acid here. I'm sorry, I don't need very much base to neutralize that acid, right? Because not only does my base have a bigger concentration, I also need half as much of it, right? So we can at least give ourselves an idea about the, the range of what we're looking for or the ballpark of what we're looking for um, with our answers here.